Now, all this week, Mobile World Live has been looking at how mobile technology is driving the fourth industrial revolution. Enterprises all over the world are at various stages of digital transformation. Today, I'm joined by three big name companies who are helping map the path to Industry 4.0. With me for this discussion are Kondoka Hook from SAS, Alex Bergner of TT Tech Industrial, and Maury Lin from Supermicro. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you, Justin. Thank, thank, thank you. you. And I'm also delighted to be joined by Sylvia Kashish. Sylvia is Principal IoT Analyst at GSMA Intelligence. Welcome, Sylvia. Pleasure. Sylvia, let's kick off with a big picture view, if we can. Um, what are the key trends right now in the manufacturing space as enterprises attempt to embrace digitalization? Thanks, Justin. So manufacturers have to handle a vast array of technologies, including robotics, ERP systems, edge computing, IoT platforms, using multiple different connectivity types. And what is really important to note is that IoT adoption is actually slower than we previously expected. So there's still a lot of assets and, and digital um, things to be connected. But what is currently happening, and due to COVID-19, we see actually manufacturing companies embracing digital transformation. So during the shock that COVID-19 has brought to the, the entire world, manufacturers had to very quickly become more agile and actually look how they produce uh, different things and readjust what is that they do. So short term, definitely there is a greater use of digital tools, including IoT, analytics and cloud. But in the longer term, there is going to be need for supply chain to be more automated to see uh, why, uh, why the supply chain and also to be able to use all sorts of tools. What we also see is that some of the manufacturers want to be able to have a localized coverage. So 23% of enterprises, manufacturing enterprises that we have surveyed, said that they want a localized coverage. But what we also see is that some of those manufacturing companies want to be able to compute closer to the edge. So edge computing is becoming increasingly ever so more important. So overall, what is very important and what we see is that what drives IoT and digital transformation is data. So be able to collect data, compute, and then analyze to achieve business benefits. Mori, uh, Sylvia just outlined some positive trends and, and some big tech trends there as well. Is, is that what you're seeing from Supermicro's perspective? Yes, definitely. Because of this, the edge computing is getting critical. And this kind of edge computing demand, not just because the industry is looking for computing at the local site. Actually, they are expecting the data center technology to be able to deploy it to the edge, which is the reason why uh, from the cloud to the edge, the concept become real. And to make this possible here, we realized that uh, to put the accelerators into the edge computing become a key. Those things that Sylvia just mentioned about how to handle those uh, uh, high, lo high loading workload for the imaging processing and also the IO topics in the virtualization environment. We need to give the foundation for all the partners here, bring up the application to solve it problem. And that's the reason why we are enjoying this kind of a transformations. And uh, today, that's also going to talk about more the benefit we can bring to the industry. Thanks, Maury. Uh, let's bring in some of Supermicro's partners. Um, Hook, SAS is globally well known for its best in class analytical solutions. Um, tell us, how are you expanding this into solutions that use some of these emerging technologies such as computer vision and AI? So to echo what um my other panelists' friends are talking about. So we have been talking about enabling edge and network of the, you know, edge of the network for maybe roughly about three to last four or five years, right? However, now, unfortunately, due to COVID-19, that discussion has accelerated. So at SaaS, we have been um, focusing on and executing with customers for over the last three decades in various disciplines of AI. What is different now that how to not only uh, have a focused execution with our customers and partners to look at not only training the AI models, but how to actually deploy train models at the edge of the network. Well, for manufacturing industries and industrial companies, uh, the edges really get down to that coming down to those manufacturing processes at the plant level. So what we at SAS are doing, we are on a very focused execution strategy, 
by hand selecting partners who can enable a joint partner developed different use cases that benefits manufacturers to address some, some of those problems. Well, what are some of the concerns that customers are, are seeing and facing when they're migrating from legacy solutions to more intelligent AI driven systems at the edge? So Justin, um, with every new technology, right, uh, turnover, when you look at transformational strategies, uh, there are typical challenges, right? There are challenges around fragmentation, just the nature of the legacy um, mm. environments that manufacturers have had over the last three, four decades. So that's one aspect that we have to keep in mind. Uh, second aspect that I see, the speed of adoption, uh, could be a little slow, but you know we're under pressure for our customers to solve some of this problem much faster. So we see both sides of the coins where there are winners uh, and uh, those uh, uh, manufacturers have adapted uh, by realizing business outcomes that they would need to be immediately on that transformation journey, whereas there are other manufacturers who are still learning by looking at their peers. And the third really is when we uh, partners come together, try to address, let's take an example, visual inspection, right? One of the uh, critical uh, enablement capabilities that uses uh, computer vision with AI models. Um, sometimes we see that uh, when our customers are engaging with us, that we're talking about one, two plans, right? Let's test it out. Mm. Let's let's see if it works, right? And let's see if it addresses uh, industry 4.0 aligned sub-millisecond responses, right? So the third area that we are seeing that we have to keep in mind that our customers are also sometimes large in scale. So scalability is also another area that we have to keep in mind. Alex, uh, TT Tech, of course, is a company that's got deep understanding of digital transformation in key verticals, particularly manufacturing. Um, tell us, what is TT Tech doing to enable enterprises to deliver value to your customers? Well, I think we fit nicely into the space between Supermicro, the hardware, and companies like SAS providing applications. We provide a managed ed edge infrastructure, which is specifically targeted for industrial workflows. It focuses on, on the specific needs of, of the usage on the shop floor on real time, that's also where the name TT Tech comes from. 20 years ago, we started as time-triggered technologies, and, and we kept that focus uh, since then. And so we decided to combine our strength uh, of real-time networking and real-time communication with industrial IoT settings, and uh, do that by providing NERF as an edge infrastructure. For that, we're example partnering for uh, with with Intel to support uh, high speed virtualization technologies, and all that all our technology helps customers in the transition from the current um, automation pyramids to software defined industrial systems. And in the current automation pyramid, you're probably well aware of that, the physical structures of automation systems and the software structures are very much tied together currently, like it used to be in uh, classical ITs, uh, IT years ago. And the advent of new technologies like low latency networking, uh, um, TSN, time-sensitive networking, safe virtualization, high-speed virtualization, enables a transformation to a different set of automation, to a different structure of automation, where you have intelligent IOs at the bottom um, transferring data through a secure and, and low latency network to a localized edge computing system. And basically, we um, in NERF provide software for that edge computing uh, system. And uh, we also, in our deterministic IP department, provide TSN uh, networking capabilities. And I think that's uh, quite uh, important that we, we see the differences from the needs of virtualization and uh, edge computing in production, availability 
is different than a high availability in uh, classical IT systems. And all that makes it, uh, makes it a very specific task to introduce edge computing in manufacturing. Talking to you all today, I mean, it seems it's not enough just to have great hardware or software on its own. Uh, really a successful move to Industry 4.0. It does require an ecosystem of partners. So, so tell us, what's the secret to bringing all this together? Maury, maybe from uh, Supermicro's perspective, you, you can take that one first. Thank you. I think uh, we are in the leading position for the edge computing. And in the situation here, we also realized the, the vertical market domain know-how is the, the entering point. Because uh, delivered edge computing, uh, we are able to do it very well. And we realized that when the partners start to talk about how they integrate their solutions to solve the smart manufacturing the industry 4.0, there are lots of knowledge, not just about computings. And edge computing is a one of the foundation there, but there are lots of know-how need to handle, such as TT tech need to handle the I.O. topic for the time timing sensitivities. And also from SaaS perspective, the analytic engines, how to handle the big data to provide a predictive uh, suggestions. Those things that we cannot do it, but with the partners, it's become possible. So that's why we three here are very exciting to, to join these sessions to share our uh, vision on these topics. Thanks. Thanks, Maury. And, and Hook from SAS, I mean, what, have, what lessons have you learned from these partnerships so far? That we have to work with the right partner to solve a customer's problem. Um, and so uh, it, to that effect, um, if, you, if you look at this topic that we are discussing today, it's also somewhat brand new when you look at how to deploy private 5Gs in a local uh, localized network, right, within the confinement of uh, large four walls, right, on-premise manufacturing plants. So bits and pieces, you know, each of us may have actually worked with both on the public uh, and the private side of the network. However, what, what is different is when you have the right partners coming together and addressing a problem, keeping the customer's use case in mind, right? What are they trying to solve? How can we solve together? What bits and pieces are needed? So just the way you and Alex and Mori are discussing that each of us are bringing our own pieces, but it has to work together in alignment to the problem that we're trying to solve for that manufacturing uh, plant owners. Thanks, Hook. And Alex from TT Tech, any closing thoughts for us? Anything to add? Sure. Um, we, I, I totally agree that the ecosystem in that space is is a must because customers, I mean, they want solutions, and uh, a solution ranges or starts from the hardware and ends at the application. All the pieces need to fit together, and the choice of the right partners is fundamental, and a good cooperation between those partners is fundamental to bring the customer the most value uh, out of our systems. And Sylvia, from an analyst perspective, any key takeaways from today? Absolutely, I absolutely agree with everything that was said so far. And um, when we think about enterprises, what enterprises want and the way they think in terms of outcomes. So they want to get the outcome that they need in the easy and simple way. And what our research actually shows is that 28% of enterprises prefer to get the IT solutions from one provider custom-made solutions. So it's being able to package that together via ecosystem partners, because as we said, as we agreed, nobody can do it alone. It's super, super important to be able, again, deliver the value that enterprises need. So thank you so much. That was, that was great. Thank you, Sylvia. And unfortunately, we're out of time, but it has been a great discussion and some good insight there. Uh, thank you again to Maury, Hook, Sylvia and Alex. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us as part of Mobile World Live's themed week. Thank you.